In this video, we're going to talk briefly about execution order within blueprints. So let me show you the blueprint that I've constructed to make this happen. It's pretty simple. I hit play, and as I'm playing, I can hit the E key, and if you look in the upper right-hand corner of the viewport, it's reporting the direction that I'm facing. So right now I'm facing east, uh, then I can fa face southeast, south, and so on. So let's take a look at the graph that is making this happen. So I'm going to pull this over. Now I have really heavily commented this graph. So I want to take just a second and walk you through it, and then we'll talk about the specifics of execution order. So basically, you press the E key. Uh, we are getting the rotation of the character. We're offsetting that by 22.5 degrees. And what that does is that takes uh, the overall rotator, which by the way runs from uh, 0 to 180 in one direction and then 0 to negative 180 in the other direction, and it uses the positive or negative values between 0 and 180 uh, to figure out what way you're facing. So what we did is we rotated that whole coordinate system by 22.5 degrees, and that way we can have a 45 degree quadrant that is perfectly upward facing without having to worry about that funny uh, switch you get between 359 and 0. So then we uh, break that open and we grab just the yaw because we just want to know which way the character is facing, and we create a simple condition using a select float. So we have just the, the actual value of the yaw on the one hand, and then we're also taking that value and adding 360 to it. And this is for those instances where yaw falls underneath zero. So uh, for instance, negative 90 is the same as 270 degrees, if you were thinking about it like in terms of a compass heading. So what we're doing is saying if that value uh, is greater than zero, then we want you to just use the raw value. So just, uh, you know, if, if, the, uh, if the direction happens to be, I'm sorry, if the yaw value is, say, 90 degrees, just use 90. If it turns out to be negative 90, then add 360 to it so that we end up with the proper value of uh, 270 in this case, which is useful just in our purposes. Now, once we have that, we end up with a full 360 degree rotation value uh, for a character. We divide that into 45 degree segments and we round it down to the floor. Now, that's going to give us an integer value. We then use a switch on int, and basically whatever int is fired in here, which is going to be uh, 0 through 7, we use that to drive an enumerator. Now, really quickly, I'm going to show you this enumerator. If I drag my graph out of the way, I can open this up. It's just a simple enumeration. You can create these in your uh, in your content browser by right-clicking and going under miscellaneous, and there's an enumeration. So it's just, you can see it's the eight cardinal directions uh, all in order, so uh, north, northeast, etc., and so on. So once we have those, we created a variable in our blueprint using that enumeration. And so based on what integer we find, we are outputting some direction. Finally, all we do is print out the result of that enumerator. So overall, it's a pretty easy setup, uh, but there, it does call into question exactly how things get executed, because it's really easy to say, well, blueprints uh, operate from left to right, which is true. You know, they're going to have inputs on the left, they have outputs on the right, but sometimes your graph does something like this, where you've got a lot of nodes way off to the left. So what is the order in which things happen? Well, when you hit the E key, this is going to take place. Okay, you're going to get your, your, uh, your pressed event, and that's going to hit your switch on int. Now, in any case where you have an input coming in from a, a non-execution wire, so basically uh, any function that has to feed data into a value, what's going to happen is Unreal is going to take a snapshot. It's going to basically trickle all the way down, reach all the way back to the back of this uh, of this wire group, and it's going to take a snapshot of all these values for this one moment in time, and then it will solve the math that is required. So it, it stops for just a second, and it grabs all these things and says, boom, okay, what are you guys doing right this very moment? So that's when it actually walks through and grabs the rotation, uh, handles the, the rotation of the coordinate system so that we, you know, and so everything works well, and then figures out whether it was greater than or less than and chooses the appropriate value based on the select float. It does the math to divide it into uh, eighth sections and then rounds that down, and then it has the information that it needs. So then it can perform the switch on int, and based on its value, it chooses one of these wires. So let's say, for instance, I was facing, well, I, I ended up with a value of zero, then that's going to fire off my output zero. That's going to set my enumerator to a direction of north, and then that is going to call the print string. Now, the print string is also waiting for an input, so he's going to reach backwards as well. He's going to go all the way back to the end of the chain and take a snapshot and then perform whatever operations are needed to satisfy these criteria. So he's going to take the direction enum, He's going to convert its output to 
a friendly string. Uh, you can even see the tooltip says uh, returns user friendly name of the enumerator. So it converts that to a string, plugs that into the print string, and then we get our result. So just to play back one more time, now when I hit play and I hit E, again, you see what's happening. But what I'm going to do real quick is we'll back out. And I'm going to try to kind of make the most of my, uh, my UI here. So actually, let's pull out the viewport, because we can do that. So I'll take the event graph here, and we'll put that on one side and line that up. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Let's do this a slightly different way. Let's make this, since this is such a wide graph, we'll make the graph nice and wide so we can see pretty much all of it. There we go. And I'll pull this stuff off screen because we don't really need it. Uh, let's go ahead and rip off the viewport. And I'll just shrink that down up here. So now we can just hit Alt-P and play. And now each time I hit E, you can see the different enumerator wires firing as I turn around, all because we're getting that different integer value. And what that means is all of those wires to the left, all those nodes, must execute. So now you know how this execution order thing works, essentially. So you have all of these nodes that don't have execution pins on their own, but they are feeding an input. So what Unreal is going to do is take a snapshot of their current state, solve all of the equations that they basically spell out, and then use that to produce the input so that it can move on with the rest of execution. That's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot. <laughs>